Hi everyone. Um, I'm David Palmer. I'm the uh, uh, Chief Product Officer uh, at Vodafone DAB. Um, I'm also um, leading on a lot of Metaverse uh, initiatives. I'm an author of, of a new book called uh, The Business of the Metaverse. And it is a pleasure to be here today to discuss, I think, one of the most important topics that, 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 that has come up in recent times, um, which is artificial intelligence. Uh, and uh, look at that in the context of uh, the metaverse. Um, I'm going to go through uh, some slides here, uh, but also I'm hoping uh, that we can get some uh, some questions as we go along. So I want to start by looking at and asking the question: Can Web three, uh, can Web three AI and the metaverse change the world? And how are, how have these three things begun to change the world as we know it at the moment? So let's look at that. So blockchain has really come on the scene and it's uh, you know with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's uh, really looking at how we can connect infrastructure and change uh, trust and information and, and automation. You know, how can we use blockchain to provide trust between organizations, between people? Um, how can we use that trust um, you know, to provide new levels of automation? And we've seen uh, that with some of these layer one and layer two platforms uh, and protocols, uh, that, we're, that we're beginning to see things like decentralized finance, uh, that we're, gonna, we're beginning to see uh, whole new applications and solutions around smart contracts. And uh, of course, tokenization and cryptocurrency are starting to emerge now. Uh, so, so, so in terms of Web3, yeah, blockchain is providing trust, um, immutability, uh, DeFi is changing banking and finance. Uh, these two things, uh, you know, are actually starting to lead to new types of organizations uh, called decentralized autonomous organizations, uh, which are largely based on um, digital identity, uh, which are based on smart contract running and governance uh, by smart contracts. Uh, but then I think there's an explosion that happened earlier this year, late last year, which was around generative AI, uh, open AI uh, specifically and chat GPT. Uh, and I think we all um, can look at the story of the 100 million users in six weeks. Uh, and now there's a big buzz around artificial intelligence uh, forecasts that 300 million jobs could be lost, but a much more opportunity uh, could be won. And, and that is, you know, beginning to change the world. There's a forecast that AI can, you know, will be the tool set uh, and change the way we, do, we, we engage with each other, uh, the way we work and how, how, how we engage productivity from an organization point of view. Uh, of course, 5G is enabling all of that. Uh, and then there's been a lot of discussion on the metaverse as well. Uh, the metaverse can remove geography. Uh, the metaverse has the ability to provide environment and context um, to our interactions. It has the potential to be the interaction point, the new web browser uh, for how people, business and machines interact with content. Um, and that has started, but maybe hasn't taken off uh, as much uh, as we thought it could have. So if we look at the world now and we look at the world in 2030, there's a, a few things um, that we can, can see. So number one, the population's increasing, right? So we're expecting 8.1 billion people by 2024 and 8.5 billion people by, uh, by, by 2030. Um, from a tel telecoms company, uh, one of the other things, uh, which I think is an amazing success story, uh, is the increase in the number of mobile phones. So uh, we've seen that there's, uh, in 2024, going to be 7.4 billion mobile phones out of a population of 8, 8 billion. So you're seeing 95% penetration of mobile phones in the world. Um, and we're expecting that, that that will increase to 8 billion by 2030. Uh, Internet of Things devices or machines, uh, we're seeing 17 billion, we're projecting 30 billion. So these are connecting cars, drones, cabinets, uh, wearables, increasing drastically. Uh, and one of, the, one of the things that I wasn't so aware of um, is that at the moment, um, you know, we've got over 4 billion uh, digital wallets. And we're expecting the number of digital wallets to increase to 5.6 billion. Uh, in terms of blockchain, um, you know, there's over 100 there were 320 million um, uh, crypto, crypto accounts. And we're expecting that that will increase, but we don't know how that will go. But there's a lot more adoption needed in that area. And in terms of metaverse users, we're expecting by 2030 uh, that we'll get to 700 million. But I think it could be 
add to you a lot more. Uh, and I challenge that forecast. Uh, but with AI, well, I mean, what's happening with AI? So we're forecasting with AI uh, that the market could be worth as much as two trillion or ten trillion by 2030. So there's a lot of a lot of um, a lot of forecasts uh, saying that that could be a massive part of our uh, uh, gross domestic product going forwards. And AI will be used in online rentals, social media, advertising, industrial manufacturing, business, support, content creation, uh, videos, and music. We're seeing, uh, I was at, at, at an event um, a while back with Avalanche, and they had, uh, you know, metaverse DJs, uh, metaverse uh, music production. We're seeing that, um, sorry, AI uh, DJs and uh, music production we're seeing that um you know video creation can be done uh potentially with ai to a lot bigger extent than it is now so so this is a tool that can really help us to reimagine how we do things right how how industry works how our business models work and um one of the uh, forecasts i think it was by uh the chairman of goldman sachs uh, or ceo of goldman sachs was saying that 300 million jobs could be lost to ai um but does the AI need does AI need um, the metaverse uh, to to realize uh, its penetration in these new new, new areas? So, uh, you know, for AI to manifest itself, for it to be used for us to interact with it, does it need the metaverse? So let's ask some questions. Yeah. So what are some questions in 2023? Uh, about the the AI and the metaverse. So one of them is, what is the metaverse? I think that is evolving, and we'll we'll attempt uh, yeah we'll attempt to tackle that question through this presentation. What is AI? Some people see AI purely as Chat GPT, uh, but AI is a lot more than that. And there's a lot more large language models, and there's a lot more applications. Uh, but there are also limitations to AI that we don't know about yet. Um, why is there less excitement on the metaverse than there was in 2022 and 2021? Is the opportunity still valid? So what we've seen is a shift in the hype cycle from metaverse to AI. And, um, you know, some people um, are saying, OK, you know, is the metaverse dead? Uh, you know, were, were we all crazy to, to think it was there? Um, and, and is the opportunity still valid? That, that's a question which we'll attempt to answer here. My, my, my obvious answer is no. I think the metaverse works with all of the technologies like Web3, Web2, and AI. Um, is there too much hype around AI? Can it deliver? And what about transition? Um, and this is something that, uh, that that maybe we yeah some of the commentary fails to realize is that AI will actually need um, time to transform um, how we do things at the moment. It won't be a big bang. Um, and, and that transition needs to be factored into the timeline and the opportunity uh, sizing uh, that we have. More importantly, for the uh, for the sake of this presentation, what is the relationship between metaverse and AI? How can the metaverse replace people uh, when people are the interaction point? So, so, so that's yeah, that is really saying what how how can the AI replace people and and their jobs? Uh, so, people in support roles, people in retail, uh, when people are that, that interaction point, and that sort of hints to the link between the metaverse and AI, because the metaverse can provide the environment and the personas for AI to really work. All right, so maybe we start with uh, a question, uh, you know, what is the metaverse? What is the metaverse? So um, the metaverse, this is my definition, uh, is a digital world uh, which exists alongside the real world and provides a digital operating system. So I repeat that and provide a digital operating system on which applications are built that provide a shared virtual reality experience, economy, business models, and interoperability across users, ecosystems, and communities. So what I want to get out of that is that the metaverse is not just people with uh, VR and mixed reality uh, headsets uh, you know, that you put on to, to get an immersive experience. I believe that the metaverse is a lot more than that, and it's actually an operating system uh, that will allow application developers to incorporate um, different technologies like Web2, Web3, uh, AI into the applications, and it will not exist alone. So if we look at um, sort of relationship between the metaverse and AI, I, I see it this way, right? So 
you have uh, the consumer metaverse. So the consumer metaverse is looking at uh, anything from gaming uh, to retail uh, to training, um, you know, to 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 other functions. So 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 there's a big consumer metaverse. And then you have the industrial metaverse, which is digital twins, uh, you know, immersive training, uh, um, you know, big uh, sort of machinery, um, digital factories, uh, and those sort of use cases. And then uh, you have the shared metaverse. And the shared metaverse are, are the new areas that are forming where you have the consumer metaverse. So this is consumers with immersive uh, um, technologies and you have industrial companies with immersive technologies. And, it, and, and sort of bordering between it where companies and consumers, so consumers can be suppliers, suppliers can be consumers. You have this shared metaverse, and this is where you have things springing up like the creator economy, the producer economy, um, the advertising economy, uh, the gig economy. And, and, and these are sort of the new areas of business that the metaverse are bringing. But I also believe that across all of this, you have something called the AI metaverse. And, and the AI metaverse, which we'll discuss later, it is really looking at um, you know that relationship between the industrial shared uh, and consumer metaverses, and um, and artificial intelligence. Sorry. So 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 how does AI fit into the metaverse technology stack? So if we look at the metaverse as an operating system. Um, then one of the technologies uh, that that operating system will expose to applications is artificial intelligence, right? And how do we uh, link metaverse to AI in that in in that uh, technology architecture? You know, could Web three uh, play a role in terms of validating uh, the the AI uh, the the AI identities and data uh, that's there? Is is um, Web three the trust anchor between AI and the metaverse? Um, and is there also a role in terms of the data uh, that will be produced increasingly in the metaverse uh, and how that fits into AI large language models? Um, but I think the key thing here in looking at this architecture is that AI is one of the enablers uh, from the uh, metaverse facing side uh, that can be fed into applications. On, on the other side, uh, we've got um, yeah, you know, some discussion on how the metaverse will evolve. And if we look at this, uh, if we look at this, you know, when we were in COVID, um, we were all locked away. Uh, we were looking at the metaverse as the means for us to do things that we couldn't do physically at the time because we weren't able to travel, we weren't able to go to concerts, we weren't able to socialize. Uh, so I think there was some element of uh, looking, uh, you know, for the metaverse. Um, you know, for those answers. And, and, and there was also a perception of this sort of big metaverse, uh, as we have the internet today that was going to be uh, persistent, that we were all going to be in at the same time, et cetera. And I, I believe that in the long term, that's still there. But I believe that the immediate metaverse is kind of what we're seeing from Apple, right? And what we're going to see increasingly on platforms. And I call it the embedded metaverse. And the embedded, embedded metaverse are basically metaverse applications and, and functionalities and enablers um, that exist in uh, platforms that we have today. So if you looked at uh, what Apple did with the Apple Pro, uh, they enabled um, immersive technology on all of their content, on applications, on videos, um, and, they're, and they're making it work in their ecosystem uh, with their accessories. And uh, the embedded metaverse, I believe, uh, will be how uh, the metaverse uh, accelerates and gains adoption in the short term. In the medium term, I believe that we then begin to see uh, interoperability ac across embedded metaverses. So Apple to Google to uh, WhatsApp to Meta, WhatsApp, whatever. Um, but I, I believe that's how it will go in the in the medium term. And in the long term, maybe we start to have this converged metaverse. Uh, but the key point here is, again, as an operating system, uh, the metaverse um, We'll, 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 we'll have many technologies. So you can expect to see IoT, blockchain, uh, you know, 5G wallets, uh, you know, other platform, Web2 platforms contributing, open banking, fintech. But I believe that the AI will feed into that. And as the AI capability increases, uh, you know, like we're seeing with uh, OpenAI and GPT-4 and the plans for five, uh, 
um, you'll start to see that increasingly uh, present in metaverse uh, applications. Uh, but but then let's go a little deeper into this relationship between the metaverse data and AI use cases. So we, we believe um, that the metaverse and how we and our space and how we interact with content is going to increase as we go forwards. Then I suppose one of the questions we have is how is that data, that increase and acceleration in data uh, that will come from the metaverse feed into AI. And I'm assuming uh, that uh, digital identity solutions, so self-sovereign digital identity solutions, uh, the ability to consent to your data uh, being used, uh, reward for that data being used is part of that. Um, as you know, the metaverse is the interaction point for you know, people to engage with content, uh, applications, machines, etc. Uh, how does that feed into AI? So I believe that metaverse user data will need incentives, um, you know, to, to feed into AI. But I also believe it's going to increasingly be a, a you know, very important source of uh, data feeding into the AI large language models. Um, and then once that is in there, uh, it will be feeding things like data-driven personalized experiences. So as you um, as users submit more of their interactions uh, and their data interaction data into AI, then that AI will be, be able to personalize experiences based on their data and similar data and uh, data that may be, that, that may be uh, you know, hinting at where, where they're going to be in the next 6, 12, uh, you know, 18 months. Uh, you have AI personal assistance. Uh, so as you uh, begin to interact with content, applications, services uh, in the metaverse, um, the data that is generated uh, from AI models can also, um, you know, m manifest itself in terms of AI personal assistants or digital assistants uh, who are helping, um, you know, people, um, you know, with experiences and, and tasks and to organize themselves and to get the most out of uh, their interactions, uh, but also businesses, uh, which leads to the next thing is could AI uh, and uh, workforce tools, uh, uh, you know, be the future of work, right? So, so are AI going to start? Uh, is AI, uh, as we work more and more in the metaverse, uh, virtually going to start becoming part of the workforce? You know, and 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 is AI tooling going to be increasingly part of what we do? And I think the metaverse data will inherently and increasingly help with that. Um, AI generated content. So, so part of the fuel. Uh, and part of the the, the, the sort of services and uh, and, and uh, activity in the metaverse will be about content, right? Content is going to be the fuel and the lifeblood of the metaverse. The more data we provide, uh, the more AI can actually generate content, um, which is uh, you know tailored to to experiences. Um, but, uh, but the other side of it is, you know, for the metaverse to to really increase. Uh, it will it will demand accelerated development, and what we're seeing with AI is that uh, we're seeing that AI can be used, uh, you know, for uh, video content. It can be used for music content. It can be used to to generate papers. It can be used to generate code. And when you look at that, you know, can AI actually help to accelerate metaverse development? Uh, and and these are some of the relationships that we that we look at. Um, in the industrial metaverse, if you look at the digital world and the physical world, um, AI um, robots and uh, you know and, and simulations and digital twins, you know, are going to be increasingly. They are already uh, in use, but they're going to increasingly be a link between industry and the metaverse. And uh, AI will be uh, the means to to take data, uh, for example, from IoT devices. Uh, and add intelligence and feed that into uh, our metaverse experiences or our metaverse businesses, our metaverse industries. Um, just just going quickly because time is there. Uh, the metaverse feature set for business. Um, so if we look at the metaverse feature set for business, um, you've got things like um, you know, immersive experience, removing geography, uh, portability or identity assets, uh, bringing AI to life. So so it, you know the question is is AI um, uh, is the metaverse AI on Earth, right? Does it bring AI to life? Uh, does it make it uh, possible to interact with people? You know, between AI and the metaverse, can you bring people back to life? Can you bring times back to life? Can you bring um, 
locations back to life. Um, you know, you can uh, have history uh, and go to any time point in history uh, in, in the future uh, in the metaverse, but can AI, is AI the intelligence that allows that to happen? So, so if you look at um, you know, time traveling uh, in, in AI, so being able to uh, use data from now to project a future and then go and, and actually experience that future with the metaverse, AI will be critical to that, um, as well as the sort of production lines that we have. So I think if you look at the metaverse feature set for business, AI will be critical to that. Uh, but I'll probably end um, on some questions. So I've had to go pretty quickly here, but one of the fundamental questions between the AI and the metaverse is, is the metaverse AI on Earth? Meaning, is the metaverse uh, going to be the interaction point where AI uh, interacts with people, businesses, and machines? And if that is the case, um, then obviously there is a very big relationship uh, and development cycle and opportunity cycle between the two. Can the metaverse provide uh, the immersive environment for people to interact with AI contextually? Uh, this is key to replacing human jobs. So I think this goes back to the first point that if the metaverse is AI on Earth, um, then obviously there's a role for, for, for the metaverse uh, where you're replacing a, a travel assistant or you're replacing a support agent for um, the metaverse to provide the persona and also the environment. If data is a currency, uh, does this become a link between uh, the metaverse and AI? And I believe that it will. I, I believe that uh, that uh, metaverse will supply data to AI and AI will bring that back with intelligence uh, shaping experience. And so I believe there's a circular flow of data, uh, the metaverse to AI and AI uh, turning that data and adding value and sending it back to the metaverse. Uh, could the AI uh, uh, be the metaverse workforce? Interesting. Uh, metaverse will be 365, 24-7. Uh, it will span geographies. Um, it will need multiple languages. You know, is that something that we'll see humans logging on to do? Or will we increasingly see the workforce, uh, the retail assistants, the shop assistants, the support agents in the metaverse being AI bots? Um, interesting question, but I, I, I would see AI being a, a significant part of the metaverse workforce. And my last question um, you know, is just saying that uh, AI is the brains and metaverse is the body. That to me uh, sums up the relationship between the two. Um, I think the reports of the metaverse death uh, have been greatly exagger exaggerated, uh, but I think that maybe uh, the perception of what the metaverse is needs a lot more exploration. As an operating system, as an interaction point with people, businesses, and machines, uh, the metaverse um, is going to be that touch point. It's going to be that new web browser. It's going to be that new interaction point with content and, and services. And if that is the case, then AI becomes uh, the supplier. And um, I think that relationship, when we look at how uh, change will happen, how, how the opportunity will accelerate, how use cases will accelerate, uh, becomes key. So I'll end there uh, and I'll take any questions if I can. Um, uh, but also uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, so David Palmer on, on LinkedIn. And I'm happy to also uh, follow up with any of you uh, on that forum. Thank you.